Here we are, it is December 9th, we are now just 11 days away from the official release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. A lot of fans are either very worried, excited, or apathetic towards this movie. A lot of fans have many different feelings before heading into this film by Disney and Lucasfilm to see exactly how the Skywalker saga will really end. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future content. Now, one thing about Episode 9 is that this movie is said to be the darkest Star Wars film there is out of the entire Skywalker saga. Now, I'll express my real opinion on this. I really don't feel like it's going to be, judging by the TV spots and the teasers and the trailers that we have seen. Yes, there have been darker tones than usual at times, but for the most part, a lot of the TV spots that we have seen actually have been quite comedic at times, you know, such as the Fly Now clip and stuff around those lines, but I digress. What's really intriguing has all to do with one of the sequences in the very end of Act 2 of Episode 9 that involves characters like Rey, Kylo Ren, Dark Rey, and other characters as well out there. Now, what's really interesting about this particular scene is that it's actually said that shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's explained that Rey is said to be using a strange boat-like vehicle where she is said to part her ways from Poe and Finn to make her way to the second Death Star wreckage. Now, Rey has a hard time traveling her way through the rough waves of Kef Burr, an ocean moon not far from the forest moon of Endor, where Rey at one point even almost falls off the boat and hangs off for her life. This is where she begins to get closer to the wreckage and docks it to a piece of scrap metal hanging on the edge of the wreckage where she makes her way in. Rey is said to be looking for something special, something that once belonged to Emperor Palpatine during the events of the original trilogy. The Force is guiding Rey to this location in which she is traveling to that eventually leads her to a device called the Wayfinder, a strange glowing device that will allow her to make her way to Palpatine's destination to the world of Exegol. Now this is Rey's ticket to destroying the Sith once and for all, where Rey is said to touch the device where she begins to see a vision warp around her, where suddenly a figure of Dark Rey appears before Rey, where she ignites a double-bladed red lightsaber and begins to fight her to the death. The scene is said to mimic the fight between Luke and Vader on Dagobah from Empire Strikes Back where eventually Rey is said to defeat the Dark Rey Vision where everything around her begins to vanish. This is where Kylo Ren begins to race his way to the ocean moon and lands his TIE Fighter on top of the second Death Star wreckage and makes his way inside to fight Rey. Eventually both Rey and Kylo Ren confront each other in Palpatine's old throne room where they are said to be in the abandoned tower of Emperor Palpatine that once stood on top of the second Death Star where they begin to fight in a lightsaber duel as Kylo begins to reveal new truths about Rey's parents where it causes Rey to tap more and more into the dark side of the Force. Now there is even a segment in the film in which Kylo Ren is trying to make Rey stop fighting him because he wants her to join the dark side with him but she is tapping into it too far to herself to defeat Kylo Ren. The scene eventually progresses to the top of the wreckage where in the background there is said to be a ton of waves in the background where Rey and Kylo battle to the death where it leads to a moment in which Rey stabs Kylo Ren as he falls down to the ground. As this happens, Finn is said to yell Rey and runs toward her, for, however Rey is explained to steal Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter and takes off, heading for Octu, along with Finn now leaving with Janna, where Kylo is literally left alone on the ocean moon of Kef Burr to collect his thoughts after getting revived from Rey by her using a new healing power in the movie. This is said to be the moment that Han Solo's vision appears. The type of dialogue is said to involve Kylo implying that he loves his father and Han Solo saying the iconic line from Empire, I know. This is the moment Kylo Ren turns to the light side of the Force and throws his lightsaber away into the ocean moon of Kef Burr and boards a TIE Fighter. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, the thing about Episode 9 here is that we do know that J.J. Abrams wants to make this a... Very emotional Star Wars film, a lot of sacrifices and losses, as well as a lot of twists and turns in the movie, and making it a very action-packed Star Wars film. The only problem that I have with Episode 9 that we have actually heard by J.J. is that they will be increasing the comedy in this movie. You will laugh quite a lot in this movie, as J.J. Abrams said, which also leads me to 
kind of just be a little bit skeptical about them making this darker than that of Revenge of the Sith, which I really don't think that's possible. But moving on, I want to go over one of the segments that I think is the most impressive, and this has to do with the Dark Ray segment. Now, I've expressed my concern about this movie, I've expressed my criticisms about this movie based on all the changes that have happened uh, by Disney and Lucasfilm over the course of a couple of months, and all the different reshoots that took place. But there's no denying it that there will be segments in this movie that will be quite decent and enjoyable, but for the most part we'll have to wait and see exactly how this is really all going to be executed on the big screen. So far this particular segment sounds so far so good, I guess you could say. Do I think it's going to match up to the Mustafar battle between Anakin and Kenobi? Absolutely not. Um, but the one thing that stands out to me is how when Rey touches the Wayfinder device, this is said to initiate the vision of Dark Rey. Now we actually went over as to why she gets a vision of Dark Rey is because within the Wayfinder device, there is an ancient Jedi artifact that allows one to see a vision of their potential future, and that at one point in time, Mace Windu is the Jedi who developed the actual Wayfinder device that was eventually stolen by Palpatine, where Palpatine kept it hidden away later on for decades inside of his second Death Star, and also this is where Rey finds it now for herself. So you can see how everything begins to connect here. Now, the thing that is going to be a little confusing about this is that a lot of fans out there believe that Rey is turning to the dark side from watching the pieces of footage. Now, there's a lot of casual fans that are probably going to be annoyed about this decision by Disney and Lucasfilm, that it's just a mere vision, or that it's a mere, you know, uh, apparition, if you will, whatever have you, of Dark Rey. It's not real. It's just a vision like Darth Vader on Dagobah. That's the actual truth of it all. So, this battle is actually said to be quite quick and quite brutal between the two, where they're inside of the second Death Star. So this all takes place in the wreckage of the Death Star that we saw in Return of the Jedi. And this is going to be a very interesting moment, because Dark Ray is by far, I think, one of the more interesting aspects. They even have a replica lightsaber. I don't know if you guys saw this, but they even have a replica lightsaber of Dark Ray on sale at some website. It's actually official. Uh, you can go ahead and purchase it. I believe there's only going to be 500 of them made worldwide, so it's very limited. Uh, I actually took a look at it the other day. It's very detailed. It makes it, you know, look all worn out and stuff. It even has a hinge in the middle, so you can snap it if you want to. Uh, but, like I say, it is rather poetic because in the first film of the Skywalker Saga, we had a double-bladed red lightsaber. And now in the last film of the Skywalker Saga, we have the return of a double-bladed red lightsaber. Except it's a little bit different. This one kind of snaps. It folds, if you will. It's a folded lightsaber. Kind of like a very, uh, you know, unique design that the Temple Guards had, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but what's really interesting about this is that this eventually leads to a moment in which Kylo Ren gets stabbed. And that also leads me to one of my little criticisms here, is that it's actually said that in this movie, Kylo Ren is defeated several times by Rey. He does not win a single lightsaber duel or any kind of a encounter against Rey, which I think a lot of fans are going to have a problem with. Not just me, I think a lot of you guys out there will have a problem with Kylo Ren getting defeated several times in the movie, you know, one after the other, and that's going to be something that I think a lot of fans are really going to express their opinion about right away once they leave the theater and realize that Kylo Ren never really was all that intimidating in the sequel trilogy with or without the helmet because he keeps on losing in these Star Wars movies. So that's the thing. I feel like that what they should have done is that they should have actually had Kylo Ren defeat Rey in some way, shape, or form in the middle film of the trilogy, The Last Jedi, kind of give it a little bit of a, you know, mirror to that of Empire Strikes Back, but they missed that opportunity. And now, they're left with no choice but for Kylo Ren to get defeated several times in, of course, The Rise of Skywalker, because we did not get to do that in the middle film of the sequel trilogy. That was their mistake. 
So I would like to hear what you guys have to say about this particular segment at the very end of Act 2 of Episode 9. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.